hello friends this is the second video of the evaporator cooling system uh, we will start now from the psychometric to understand the evaporator cooling system it is very important to understand the basic concept of the psychometry we will not go in the detail but we will just uh, discussing the basic concept of some properties of the air psychometry is the study of the property of the mixture of dry air and the water vapor so like a uh, uh, we will see now the dry air uh, dry bulb temperature is nothing it's just associated with the sensible heat available in the air it can be measured by the normal thermometer and the wet bulb temperature it is the maximum temperature which can be achieved by evaporation then the humidity ratio humidity ratio is very important which is involved in the evaporator cooling system the humidity ratio or specific humidity so what is the humidity ratio a specific humidity actual this is the actual grams of the vapors containing actual moisture in terms of gram per kilogram of dry air this is the humidity ratio then the relative humidity relative humidity is it is the actual moisture available in 1 kilo of 1 kilogram of dry air versus how much the actual moisture of air can be hold air at a saturated condition at the same temperature particular temperature dew point is the dew point temperature is the temperature where the satu saturated point came where we cannot add extra moisture if you want to add moisture it will be condensed and it will con come out enthalpy is nothing it is the combination of sensible and latent heat and it is the heat available in the air in the form of the kilojoule or btu per pound so this is the psychometric chart if we will see the psychometric chart if we will go the straight left hand side so the sensible we are decreasing the sensible heat if we will go to the straight right hand side we are increasing the sensible heating so this is the heating process this is the cooling process if we will go up straight so it is a humidity just we are adding the moisture humidification if we are come down so it is a dehumidification if we will go like our conventional air conditioning system between this line and this line and this part it will be the cooling also and dehumidification also and this part it will be the cooling also but humidified so our evaporator cooling system is working of this part this part of we our uh, the conventional evaporator cooling system is working on this portion because here our wet bulb temperature will be remain constant and the enthalpy also will be remain constant there is some basic formula like sensible heat this is the formula 1.08 cfm db2 db2 is the outlet temperature and db1 is the inlet air temperature then the latent heat formula so w2 is it is a specific humidity outlet condition and w1 is the specific humidity at inlet condition so this formula we can use it to calculate the sensible heat and latent heat are we can use the formula of the total heat 4.5 cfm the enthalpy at the outlet condition and enthalpy at the inlet condition we can use this formula also how we are doing the evaporator cooling there is a direct conventional method how the warm air is coming and it is pass passing from the cellulose pads where the water is shower and we are getting the cold air or we are getting the spray bank system like a shower system we are getting the evaporation cooling indirect evaporator cooling we are using the heat exchanger this is a copper tubes and aluminum fins type heat exchanger there is other heat exchanger polymer type and uh, we can use the polymer type depend upon the which uh, what we the efficiency of the heat exchanger but what is better we will use so we will discuss now the copper tube and aluminum types heat exchanger in our calculations also so this is the mode of, of evaporation cooling how we are using the indirect evaporator cooling the heat exchanger the from the cooling tower the cooling tower the water is from the in and the water is cold water is from here is the cold water is in and the hot water is coming out the warm air is passing from this heat exchanger and coming in the cold way this is the indirect and the direct and indirect evaporator cooling this is the first stage the primary air is hot air ambient air is coming when it is passing from the heat exchanger this is our heat exchanger which i should you do th this is the heat exchanger copper and aluminium fins when the air is hot air is passing from here it is getting to the sensible cold 
the sensible load is reducing here no moisture adding because there is a no moisture no water contact with con direct contact with this primary air so this air is coming to be cold and then second stage it is passing from the the cellulose pads with the shower water is shower here is the direct contact with the water and the moisture is adding for this stage in the direct evaporator cooling our wet bulb temperature will remain constant and the enthalpy will be remain constant here in the direct evaporator cooling the temperature is reducing but the moisture is adding if you see the moisture here this this and when we will see the moisture is here the here is the moisture is more because we are adding the moisture but enthalpy will be remain constant and the wet bulb temperature also will be remain constant in the conventional direct evaporator cooling system but indirect evaporator cooling system here what we are doing here the heat after the heat exchanger our sensible load is reduced if you see our sensible load is reduced and the dew point temperature also remain constant and specific humidity will be also remain constant here no moisture adding and the enthalpy will be also reduced for in the indirect evaporator cooling this is the combination of the direct and the indirect evaporator cooling when the air is passing from the heat exchanger we are reducing the sensible heat so sensible heat reducing it will come in the straight line by constant specific humidity and the dew point temperature after that we are using the conventional dex system our cellulose pad here the wet bulb temperature will be remain constant enthalpy will remain constant if you see here the humid specific humidity or humidity ratio was same here but when in the second stage the there is the water the moisture content will be added water will be added in the air if you see the water will be had now this will be the the value of the water will be add here here will be in the idec process the this value will be remain constant so if in the indirect evaporator cooling there is adding of the moisture if you see the specific humidity is increased from 13.56 to 16 but it is not too much increase if you use only the single stage conventional direct evaporator cooling system it will be more added the moisture contents so moist moisture content will be more mo will be more added so how the process of the evaporator cooling if we will see the direct evaporator cooling conventional evaporator cooling here the direct contact of the water and the air adiabatic this is the adiabatic process dry bulb temperature will be reduced wet bulb temperature will be remain constant there is a increase of the moisture contents and the enthalpy will be remain the constant in other case in the indirect evaporator cooling the sensible load will be reduced no contact of the moisture and the air then dry bulb temperature will be reduced wet bulb temperature will be reduced moisture content the specific humidity or humidity ratio will remain constant and enthalpy will be reduced this is our idec process and this is the conventional dec process where the constant wet bulb temperature are constant enthalpy it is the adiabatic process in the direct evaporator cooling as we discussed before uh, this slide already we discussed before the uh, the constant wet bulb temperature and enthalpy will be remain constant now we will see the performance analysis and the basic design of uh, the evaporator cooling system Uh, before we have to start the design we have to collect some data like we have to get the collect some data how much the lights watts available inside the building uh, how many people available what type of the building what are the side of the expose of this building we have to calculate or then we have to make the heat load calculation in the heat load calculation we need only the sensible heat load room sensible heat then we have to see the weather condition summer or monsoon what is the dry bulb temperature what will be the wet bulb temperature then we have to find the ahu and evaporator cooling outside air condition then we have to calculate the air volume then we have to calculate the air change per hour per hour or the cfm per square foot then we can select the what is the higher result will come in the three process like heat load calculation cfm or air change or cfm per square foot what will be the higher result we will go for the higher result so evaporator cooling system uh, performance is measured by a wet bulb effectiveness if the outlet of unit dry bulb or wet bulb will be equal it means the this is the saturated uh, condition for example if our ambient condition the dry bulb temperature is 46 and wet bulb temperature is 26 
if our outlet condition if we are getting the air ambient air we are passing from the evaporator cooling system and we are getting the temperature of the dry bulb is 26 it means that we are getting the 100 percent efficiency of the wet bulb effect now we are getting the 100 percent efficiency which is not possible normally when we are getting the if the wet bulb temperature is suppose uh, outside is uh, 75 fahrenheit so we are getting the plus 5 or plus 6 or plus 4 the outlet condition of the uh, hot air after passing from the heat exchanger so in the direct in the conventional evaporator cooling system there is a cellulose pad which have the different th thickness of course the different thickness have the different efficiency if we use the four inch uh, thick pad we can get the efficiency of the 60 percent if we use the eight inch thick pad we can get the efficiency of 80 percent if we use the 12 inch thickness so we can get the efficiency of 90 percent same the indirect evaporator cooling we can get the efficiency from 50 to even the 80 percent uh, the indirect the heat exchanger efficiency is mostly depending on the uh, wet bulb depression what is the wet bulb depression it is the difference between the dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature if the difference is more than 14 degrees centigrade we are getting the 80 percent efficiency in our, our heat exchanger this is the formula how to get the efficiency of our, our evaporator cooling system it is the inlet air dry bulb temperature this is the outlet air dry bulb temperature outlet mean after the heat exchanger if we, this is the convention if we are using the conventional system cellulose pad so after the cellulose pad what is we are getting the temperature here it is the ambient air temperature this is again ambient air temperature inlet air temperature and this is the inlet air ambient wet bulb temperature we can get the efficiency of our evaporator cooling system so how to get the outlet temperature just from same this formula we, this is the formula outlet air drive temperature we can drive from here this is the outlet air drive temperature this will be the formula we can get the outlet get uh, outlet uh, dry bulb temperature from this formula we can calculate indirect evaporator cooling system in the indirect evaporator cooling system we have the two stages first we have to get the temperature after the heat exchanger but the formula will be remain same outlet air dry bulb temperature same formula inlet air dry bulb temp and ambient temperature then efficiency of the heat exchanger then again the ambient dry bulb temperature then after the heat exchanger temperature uh, this is in sorry this is the inlet air wet bulb temperature and ambient wet bulb temperature by using this formula we can get the outlet air temperature after the heat exchanger so generally the efficiency of the heat exchanger can be vary from 60 to 80 percent so when uh, outlet air dive dry bulb temperature inlet air uh, okay then we will go to the next slides if you see this one this is the wet bulb depression which what is what is wet bulb depression is different between the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature as i said if our difference would be more than 40 14 percent we can get the efficiency of heat exchanger is 80 percent if you see this one if we get if we, the difference is 15 and 16 the efficiency will be more and more but if the uh, difference between the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature uh, is more than 14 degree centigrade we can get the efficiency is 80 percent so now we will start the calculations uh, this uh, we will cover in our next video so we will see our the third video we will cover these calculations